Um, and this fascinating experiment was performed in 1976 by Dr. John Jackson, Dr. Eric Jumper, uh, doc, uh, Reverend Dr. Kenneth Stevenson, Giles Sh Charter, and Peter Schumacher. And they, they analyzed the Shroud of Turin with the VPA image analyzing computer. And as you can see on the bottom right there, produced a three-dimensional image of the face of Jesus Christ, which actually makes it uh, unique on the whole planet. There is no other two-dimensional image on the planet that will do this because th this shroud is dimensionally encoded. You see, the shroud of, is actually a three-dimensional topographical image. The closer the cloth was to the body, the more the image was highlighted, and the image then acts like a photographic negative with light and dark reverse, but dimensionally encoded. It's this dimensional encoding which is so unique, which is why I'm absolutely certain that the Shroud of Turin was not a fraud, because nobody can do this, even today, in 2009. On the left there, you can see the three-dimensional body of Jesus on, uh, on the Shroud of Turin. Now, some people think that Leonardo da Vinci had a, a primitive camera called a camera occulta. Well, he may well have had that, but let me tell you that no camera today can produce these three-dimensional properties. Now we're going to look at carbon dating. Um, the whole theory of the, um, that the, the Shroud of Turin is medieval is based on radioactive carbon dating. And you need to know a little bit about carbon dating. You don't have to know a lot, you do have to know a little. Um, now, there are 111 elements that we know about, and one of them is carbon. It's in position 6, um, and there are three types of carbon. There's the normal C12, which is normal, normal carbon. Then there's two isotopes called C13 and C14. These are called isotopes. Now, radioactive C14 is actually formed high up in the stratosphere, um, and then is incorporated into carbon dioxide, drifts down onto the surface of the Earth, and then is breathed in by uh, plants. We'll look at that. So um, radioactive C14 is formed in the upper atmosphere by the bombardment of nitrogen atoms with cosmic rays from the sun. We don't have to know the details of exactly how it all works, but let me just tell you very simply that this radioactive C14 is then incorporated into gas called carbon dioxide, so a very small amount of CO2, or carbon dioxide, um, has radioactive C14 in it, which then drifts down through the, strata, through the, uh, the various layers in our, make, makes up the air, the surface above the Earth, uh, drifts down to ground level and is incorporated using photosynthesis into the plants. So the plants then have radioactive C14 in them, um, and then, of course, we eat some plants, but animals also eat the plants, and, of course, we eat the animals and the plants. So, so both the plants and the animals and humans as well all have a small amount of C14 in them. Now, the whole basis of, of carbon dating is based on the radioactive decay. On the right-hand scale there, if you look, you can see the figure 16. So if you had uh, 16 grams of C14, which you wouldn't have because there's only a, we're only talking about tiny amounts, but if you came back after 5,730 years, only half of it would have decayed. In other words, it's not C14 anymore. It decayed back to nitrogen. If you came back after another 5,730 years, you'll find there's only 4 grams of um, C14, and so on. And so the theory is that if you know how much C14 in is in a piece of material, you can date it. Now, the shroud was made from lac, uh, flax, the Shroud of Turin is authentic and was manufactured at the time of Christ. And the linen of the Shroud, manufactured around 33 AD, already had radioactive C14 in it because it's made from flax, which is plants, which has got radioactive C14 in it. Um, so the, um, the Shroud from the time of Christ uh, had radioactive C14 in it. Now, this is very important. Carbon dating doesn't actually date anything. What happens the, um, the people who interpret the results basically use the known, known rate of decay of C14, and using this known rate of decay, you can see in the British Museum that various specialists have said that the Shroud of Turin, based on carbon dating, is based 1260 to 1390. The AD 1260 to 1390 date was calculated by secular scientists who haven't taken into account the physics of the resurrection, and that's what we're going to be looking at. 
Now, this is very important to understand. It's not that complicated. According to carbon dating theory, if the shroud had very little radioactive C14 in it, the radioactive C14 thus must therefore have decayed and it must be dated 33 AD. So on the right there you have a very pale shroud which indicates that um, there's very little radioactive C14 in it. The glass is empty and that would be a 33 AD shroud. But what they actually found was uh, on the right there a very bright sh shroud shall we say indicating lots and lots of radioactivity. There's a glass half full to illust illustrate, we're talking about lots and lots of radioactivity in this shroud, and they th therefore they say that according to the laws of carbon dating, it must be medieval, and maybe Le they haven't actually said, but a lot of people say that Leonardo da Vinci uh, created the shroud. So just to go through that once again, a very pale shroud, no very little radioactivity, it's all decayed, an empty glass, it's the 33 AD shroud. A 1325 AD shroud, uh, would be uh, on the right there, lots of radioactivity, uh, lots of C14 present, therefore it must be medieval, therefore possibly Leonardo da Vinci or somebody else created it. I hope you can understand that. A pale shroud, 33 AD, very little radioactivity, lots of radioactivity, it's a medieval shroud, 1325. Now, Leonardo da Vinci couldn't have created the Shroud of Turin. He just couldn't, it's not possible. Now, Leonardo da Vinci was a supremely gifted Renaissance artist, designer, scientist, engineer, and thinker, and many people believe he created the Shroud of Turin. Barry Schwartz, the official Shroud of Turin photographer, has publicly stated that the Shroud of Turin could, could not be created by the cleverest scientists in the world today. In fact, I've said earlier, it would be easier for Leonardo da Vinci to have designed and launched the, the Hubble Space Telescope, which was actually launched in 1990. Now, NASA planned the work on the Hubble Space Telescope in 1970, and my point is this, the technology is now available for Leonardo da Vinci to create a Hubble Space Telescope. But the laser technology uh, is not available today in 2009 for, for Leonardo da Vinci or anybody else to create a Shroud of Turin. Because nobody's got those, that technology. So nobody can create a fake Shroud of Turin in 2009. So I want to now issue a challenge for all the Shroud of Turin skeptics, of which there are many out there, because most people think the Shroud of Turin is a fraud. Before you start, let me remind you, the, remind you of the challenges you face to create a fraudulent Shroud of Turin. First, you need to obtain a first century piece of precious Jewish linen in a specific weave, 14 inches, sorry, 14 feet, three inches long, and three feet, seven inches wide exactly. This must exactly match the identical linen from Masada, Israel, woven in a specific way on a special ancient loom. Basically, this is unavailable, according to Mechild, Mech, sorry, Mechild Fleury Lemberg, a worldwide authority on ancient textiles. This piece of linen is very specific and must contain pollen from Jerusalem and calcium aragonite from ancient Jerusalem. And then you need to obtain not one, but two different Roman leptons, coins, both minted by Pontius Pilate in AD 29. Now, there are only 13 known specimens in the entire world of all five of the Pontius Pilate coins, but you need two more minted in AD 29. I'm going to say you're going to find that quite difficult to find two more. Uh, then you've got to apply human blood, type AB, with a very high content of bilirubin, because uh, that's what, uh, when uh, victims are tortured, as happened during the crucifixion, there's a high bilirubin content in the blood. Now the special blood must now be applied to your fraudulent cloth in exactly the right places to collect, correctly demonstrate the scourging, the crown of thorns, the crucifixion nails, and the Roman lance. And you've got to apply the human blood uh, before you burn the image on the shroud. There's no image under the blood, so the blood must be applied first. And the blood that you apply must exactly match the identical blood on the Sudarium of Oviedo in Spain, which is kept in a closely guarded sealed wooden box. Now, we suggest you wait for three days and three nights because that's what we have believed happened in the case of the original, but what you do is entirely up to you. But that's actually, all of that's very simple compared with the next part. Now you've got to scorch an image of a crucified man onto the linen using an unknown laser radiation technique in photonegative for the image and photopositive for the blood. 
The technology, as I keep saying, is currently unavailable in 2009. Your scorch marks must contain distance imaging three-dimensional properties which will convince scientists using NASA's VP8 image analyzing computer. Now, the shroud of Turin, as I rem uh, must remind you, is the only known image on Earth that contains these three-dimensional properties. Um, we'd actually love you to create another one. We'd love to see how you're going to do it. Now, when you created this second shroud of Turin, please uh, uh, put C14 on it to your 2009 fraud, so it will be dated to 1325 by radiocarbon dating. But before you do that, let me warn you that nobody has ever managed to apply radioactive C14 to any material to actually predate it by 700 years before the material's actual date. Uh, now you've got to convince the whole world that the Sudarium of Oviedo in Spain, which contains identical blood type AB and identical blood marks to your fraud, is also a fraud just like yours. You've also got to convince the whole world that the Hungarian Prey Codex manuscript dated 1192, which shows the same herringbone weave and identical patterns of small poker bone holes found in your fraud, is also a fraud. Now, the Shroud of Turin is the single most studied artifact in human history, according to Chuck Missler. You've got a, you've got a very difficult test now. You've got to convince literally thousands and thousands of highly qualified scientists including many professors in their field, that your fraud possesses all of the properties of the Shroud of Turin. Uh, these will include photographic experts, nuclear physicists, botanists, archaeologists, historians, forensic pathologists, radiologists, carbon dating experts, textile specialists, and experts in ancient Jewish antiquities. Um, a whole list of them, we've covered some of them, but there are a whole lot more we haven't discussed. Uh, now we come to an even more difficult challenge for you, because, you see, Leonardo da Vinci is credited with doing two things. First of all, he created an image using technology which is not available now. In 2009, nobody can create a three-dimensional image like the Shroud. Um, and secondly, create an image which was analyzed by the VP8 image analyzing computer, which is technology which was only available 500 years after he died. So therefore, you've got to be able to see into the future to pass part two of the test. Part two of the test is to create an image using unavailable technology. That's your first part. And then see into the future and accurately predict the technology which will be available 500 years from now in the year 2509 to scientifically validate your image. Your image must be unique in the whole of the Earth in the year 2509, just like the Shroud is now. Now, here's a conclusion to any rational and unprejudiced scientist. The Shroud of Turin is unique, and the technology is not, not understood, and nor is it ever likely to be. The Shroud of Turin is from the time of Jesus, with an image of a crucified man perfectly formed in photonegative with three-dimensional properties. Um, Dame Isabel Pixek, I mentioned before, she's also a particle physicist and explains the physics of the image on the Shroud. She says that, the formation of the image on the that at the formation of the image on the shroud, there was an event horizon when the body of Jesus was suspended in space with zero gravity. She says that at the formation of the image on the shroud, there was no gravity, no entropy, no gravitational collapse, no time, and no space. And she says that this conforms to no known laws of physics and is a true event horizon. Uh, now, Dr. August the Setter has actually discovered how the image of the Shroud was, of Turin was actually formed. It was formed by radiation. Now, Dr. August the Setter is a radiologist in California and founder of the Shroud Center of Southern California. And he did a very interesting experiment on, on, on himself. Remember, he's a radiologist. Um, and he said he believed that the image on the Shroud was similar to an X-ray and that the image was caused by a blast of nuclear radiation. So he discovered, in our opinion, exactly how the image on the shroud was formed. And he's actually very humble about his amazing discovery. He was convinced of the authenticity of the shroud, and he believed that the image on the shroud was caused by a burst of radioactivity. So he injected himself with radioactive material and produced an image with dimensionally encoded information. And then he put himself under the VPA image analyzing computer and produced on the right there a three-dimensional image of himself similar but not as good as the shroud without using any paint or pigment of any sort. You can read about his discovery on shroud.com.